Welcome to Mind What Episode 3. My name is Ben Spieldunner. I'm an English teacher and educational technologist at Ashland High School in Ashland, Ohio. Now, you're interested in Minecraft. You've gotten a little taste of what Minecraft is like. Maybe you've played around a little bit. Now you should have some questions. How do I start a world? What do I do in order for my students to be successful? What do I do to make sure that the experience they have is a pleasant one? Well, episode three is all about ensuring that the world that you create is successful for, for both you and your students. We're going to talk about using commands and how you can help students. We're going to talk about tips in order to start a world so that way students know exactly what they're doing and where they're going. So, here we go. Episode three, Mind What? In episode three of Mind What? We're going to take a look at a few different things. The first being commands. In order for you to be really successful in using Minecraft education in your classroom, you really have to know at least a few commands. And I'm not going to go over all the commands today because there are quite a few. And there are some great resources out there um, to be able to look into the commands. And if you look in the description below, I've got a, um, I've got a few links to help you out if you're more interested in, in learning some of the other commands. But we're going to learn the most important ones, or at least the ones that I think are most important, the ones I use most often in the classroom. Now, before we start any commands, there's one other thing we have to do. And we've got to figure out the coordinates for the locations that we want to be able to use in this world. Now, when it comes to commands, there's lots of commands that will allow you to move kids instantly from one location to another, but you have to know the coordinates of those locations. So in order to do that, you're going to have to open up your inventory. We're going to go to the Seed tab. And you're going to click on the empty map, and you're going to put it in your Quick tab here. And you notice at the bottom there the little empty map. So you're going to go to the empty map, and you're going to click on the same button, button that you would use to place a block. And then you'll see, miraculously, there's another map there, but it looks like it may have writing on it. You click on that map, and if you look in the upper left-hand uh, side of the screen there, you'll see position. And this position is minus 306, 95, 262. Now what I did was I just wrote that those numbers down on a post-it note because we're going to use those later on. So this is a great resource. So when you first start a Minecraft world, you'll, you'll get imported into the middle of the world and that's the default location. Well, let's say you don't want that to be the default location. You want students to spawn into another area of that world. The first thing you're going to do then is you're going to have to set the, the spawn point, all right? So, first thing you have to do is open up your command list. If you don't know how to do this, you're going to have to escape, you're going to go to settings, and you're going to click on keyboard and mouse, and you're going to go all the way to the bottom. where it says open command. Now I have set the grave button, which is the upper left-hand corner of my keyboard. You click on that and then you click whatever you want to set to open the command. And it's totally up to you, whatever key you want. All right, so once you know what button it is that will open the command, you go op open the command and you'll see there's automatically a backslash there. You will need a backslash every time that you actually post a command. And there's a list of a lot of the commands, not all of them, but a lot of the commands right there for you, okay? If you look at the bottom of the list right here, it says set world spawn. That's actually the, the command we're going to use, all right? So we're going to type in set world spawn. Now you'll see it says spawn point XYZ. Those are your coordinates that we just figured out based on the map. So the coordinates for this particular location is minus 306, 95, 262. Now you notice I did not put any commas in there. You don't need any commas. In fact, commas will throw it off. So, I'm going to hit enter, and now the world spawn point has been set to the exact location where I am standing. All right? Even over, overlooking the, the water here. Okay? So you can do that for any location, whether or not, you know, it's here or another, another location. All you need is, uh, is a map that you've used to find the coordinates in the upper left-hand corner. All right? So, that's set world spawn. Now, I want to show you another command feature that also uses the map. Alright, so 
Let's say that you have a project where you want students to work in groups, but you don't want them all to be in the same location. You know, you have different locations. Maybe you have them all spawn to the same location, but then later on they're going to travel to uh, their different group locations. So we're going to look for a different location here. All right, so I'm going to fly by hitting jump twice quickly. And I like this waterfall over here. This is kind of pretty. Very scenic. Okay, so they get a little bit of water. They've got some lava over here. Now, I have already gone to the trouble of putting a sign up for group A. Alright, so this is where I want group A. So I'm going to pull up my map and I'm going to write down the coordinates for group A, which is minus 519-99407. Alright, now I'm going to go on a rabbit trail for just a minute here. You'll notice that we've got rain here. Rain can be noisy and, and you have a lot less uh, field of vision here when it comes to, to rain. It's a lot, lot cloudier, a lot foggier. So I'm going to show you one quick command here, okay? And that's weather. So I'm going to type in weather. And you notice a list here of clear, rain, and thunder. Right now I've got rain. I can either ramp it up and go to thunder, and you'll, you'll see here in just a minute, you'll see lightning striking various locations. And when lightning strikes, it will ignite things on fire. Things made of wood, uh, made of wool. So you, you hear it. There it is. There's lightning. You can see it's striking the ground. Okay? It can also strike people too. Now, for our purposes, I want the weather to be clear because I want you to be able to hear what I'm saying. Just like that, the world clears up. All right. So I got my coordinates for group A. Now I want to get my coordinates for group B here. And so I'm going to make group B on this floating patch of land over here. And you notice I already have a sign for B. Right there. So I'm going to pull up my map once again. And the coordinates for group B are minus 497, 95, 55. Alright. So I've written down my coordinates. Now, the way I write this down is, I usually use something super comp complicated, a post-it note. So I'll take a post-it note, and I will actually write the coordinates of different locations for the various worlds that I'm using with my various classes, and I will simply uh, tape the post-it note right in front of the keyboard for my Surface Pro, so that way I have access to it very easily, right? And you'll see a picture come up on the screen here that shows you what that looks like. And for me, that's the easiest way to do it. All right, so I've got all my locations, and I want to go back to the... Uh, spawn point. So I'm going to go to my commands again. And the way to teleport, I can either type in TP or I can type in the entire word teleport. All right. And then I got to figure out who I want to teleport. And since I'm the only person in the world, I'm going to teleport myself. And I want to teleport, more, teleport myself to the original coordinates, which I'm typing in right now. And I hit enter. And there I am. All right. I'm right in the original location that we have. So, one last feature about teleporting. When you type in teleport, you'll actually see a list of all the people that are in your world. You can teleport all players to a location. You can teleport players that are nearest to you. You can see some of those options right there. All right, now since I'm the only person in the world, my name is the only one that you'll see. If you don't type in someone's name exactly the way it appears on this list, then they won't teleport. All right, so the, the order is typing in teleport, the name of the person you'd like to teleport, and then the coordinates you want to teleport them to. This is particularly handy for students to get lost, and they need to get back to their group, uh, or they're wandering too far, or they've wandered into another group's area, any of those kinds of things. Alright, so that's a teleport feature. Now, before we move on to some of the other commands, since we're back to the original world spawn point that you set, and since we set up this little mock scenario where we have different groups, one of the suggestions I have is before getting students in the world is to give them a way to know where their group is going to be. Now you can do that face to face or you can do this in the world. All right, so I'm going to go back into my inventory. All right, I'm going to click on the little library uh, books there and I'm going to go all the way down to where it says board. And I want to put a board in my quick tab here and I want to put a board up. And on this board, 
Well, I'm going to put the directions to give kids so that way they know where to head for their group. All right, so I'm going to say, welcome to Utopia. All right, and I like to center these things just because I think it's more visually appealing. Because let's face it, in real life, you're probably going to center these things. And then I'm going to put group A. And all I'm telling them is their house is this direction. Group B, your house is this direction. Now I can also put on here their task. Your task is to run three days. Good luck. Once you get typed out, they look right there. So once they spawn in, they'll see this right away. Oh, I'm in group A. I'll head to the right. Oh, I'm in group B. I'll head to the left. Now, what group B doesn't know is they have a floating island there, so maybe a little harder for them to actually get to their area. All right. But this is one suggestion I have. It makes things a little bit easier. Now, let's say you don't want to use the board. You actually want to use a person to give directions. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the sword. We're going to go down to this little brightly colored like spawn NPC, and we're going to have a person that's going to give directions. So I'm going to spawn them right here. All right. You know, there's a person. Okay. And I'm going to call our person Mel. And Mel's going to give the directions. So Mel's going to say, Welcome to Utopia. Group A. You get the idea, then I can fill out the rest. Now, I can also put a URL in here, a website address, that, that may give them some hints on how to, how to stay alive in Minecraft, or how to build a simple house, or those kinds of things, all right, that students can actually click on. And when students click on this, they won't be able to edit any of the information in any of these fields. Okay, they can simply access it. And then there's actually a link that they can actually click on that will actually bring that up an external web page. So I'm going to change the look on my person to this, and there's Mel. So when the students spawn in, they click on Mel, and this is what they see. Okay. The nice part about using a person is you could give them a URL resource, where you can't do that um, on the board. All right. So. I've got my world set up, or I think I've got it set up, but there's there's a few other things, loose ends that I need, need to tie up here before we move on to some of the other commands, okay? And one of those is making sure that the world is set up exactly the way that you want it to set up. So once, you, once you're here, you can go to your settings, and you can look at some of these things. So for the most part, my suggestion would be to turn your personal game mode to, to creative, all right? That way you can float, you have access to everything, you won't get hurt, you can fly around, all, that, all those kinds of things, okay? And this is where you need to start making some real decisions. What difficulty do you want? Peaceful means that students will not have to deal with hunger, there'll be no monsters, they'll still have falling damage, and they'll still have, you know, they can still drown in fire damage and those kinds of things. But they'll have no monsters and they have no hunger. Once you click to easy, then you have to deal with things like hunger, and monsters spawn at night, those kinds of things, and then of course normal and hard, just you know, more monsters, more difficult, those kinds of things. Hunger happens more quickly. All right, so it all depends on the scenario that you want to create. I would leave cheats on, because if you don't leave cheats on, then you can't teleport people, you can't do those kinds of things. All right, so I would always leave cheats on. And the other, other thing you need to think about is, do you want your world to always be day? To always look the way that our world looks right now? If not, then you click the button, and then it will allow your world then to experience both day and night. Now remember, if your world's not on peaceful, at nighttime monsters will spawn. Okay, so if you don't want that to happen, you can either set it on peaceful or set it on always day. So for our purposes, we're going to leave it on, on always day so it doesn't turn dark during the directions. All right. All right. So once you get those settings the, exactly the way you want, we can get back to looking at the commands. All right. So so far we've looked at setting world spawn, we've looked at teleporting, and we've, we've looked at weather. We need to look at a few other things here. The first one of those being the game rules. So if you set up your world and you don't want students to be able to harm one another, you need to change that game rule. So we're gonna go back to our commands, we're gonna type in game rule, all one word, and you see some options here, okay? All right, and the option I'm talking about is PVP, that's player versus player. And we can either type in false and hit enter, that means that students can no longer hurt each other, okay? They can still be hurt by falling and fire and all that kind of stuff, by monsters, but they can't be hurt by each other. 
If you want to create a scenario in which students can harm one another, uh, you know, if you're doing like a war simulation, you know, or you know, any of those kinds of things, you can type in game role PvP true. Now the default is true. So when students enter the world, if you change nothing, they will be able to harm each other. Alright? So, my suggestion, if you don't want students to harm each other, spawn in the world first, immediately change the, the game rule, um, and then you'll be set up and it should be just fine. Alright? Um, the next one is messaging. And um, this, is, this is really handy if you want to um, say something to only one student. So let's say a student has wandered too far, or you can tell they're, 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 for some reason they just need like, I don't know, maybe they found something really great and you want to say congratulations. You're going to type in message, MSG, okay? Um, and then you're going to type in the student name. So in this case, I'm the only person in the world. So I'm going to type in my name. And then I'm going to type in whatever message I want to type. So I'm going to say congrats on finding a house. And I enter and you'll see it says your whisper. So I whispered to them and then it shows up on theirs. A whisper. Meaning that no one else can see this except for them. Okay. This is really handy if you've hidden some secrets in the world, which I like to do, uh, or if they've completed a task that, that they needed to complete, you can congratulate them that way. Alright, it's kind of nice. So that's messaging. The last command I want to show you is game mode. Alright, so the default game mode for this world, if you hit escape and settings, the default game mode is going to be uh, creative for this world. Okay, so anybody that joins this world is going to join it in creative mode. Okay, let's say that I don't want that. Or let's say the default game mode is set as survival, but I want some of the students to be on creative and some of the students to be on survival. And you may be thinking to yourself, Ben, why in the world would I want some on creative and some on survival? Differentiation. So one thing I've discovered is there are some students that know a ton about Minecraft, you just let them go. You just give them the task and they're, they're, they're ready to go. You have some students that maybe have never played. Um, they don't have as much confidence. Creative mode, number one, gives them uh, the ability to have access to every resource available in the game. Okay? So they don't have to worry about mining or you know, chopping down trees. They don't have to worry about the whole crafting process, all those kinds of things. Um, now, what you will see is a link in the description to a crafting com compendium um, that, that I found online that's extremely helpful. Maybe extremely helpful to you as a teacher, but also extremely helpful to students. All right, So that's, that's one thing you can give them as well. But um, this will allow you to differentiate. All right, So you're going to go back to your commands and you're going to type in game mode. And then you can either type in C or creative for creative or S or survival for survival, okay? So let's say, you know, the, the default mode for the, for my world is creative. So I want some of them to be in survival. So I'm gonna type in survival, okay? And then I simply type in the names of either everybody or particular uh, students' names. And I'm the only person in this world, so I'm gonna type in survival Ben S, all right? And then you hit enter, and then it will give that particular student that particular game mode. So you could have a number of students that are in creative and a number that are in survival. The other thing nice about this is, is if you have, you can use that as an incentive. So if you have a student that finds or completes a task that you want them to complete in the world, you can give them creative mode as a, you know, congratulations, you did the task, way to go. You have creative mode. Um, you can kind of, you know, go ahead and play around the world uh, however you'd like. All right, so those are just a few suggestions. Those are definitely not all the commands. Um, but those are the commands that I personally use most often and I think the commands that you need to be most familiar with right away with Minecraft Education Edition. Alright, so in episode 4 uh, we'll, we'll be looking at a few other um, tips, tricks, and um, little um, how-to's when setting up your Minecraft world with your students. So thanks a lot for watching.